Hey everyone, the name is Eric and I just thought I'd make a small behind the scenes content update for all of you. So, as you might know, sometimes I'm not very consistent on YouTube. Sometimes I disappear for weeks, sometimes months, with very little content or a few ideas or a few things happening on the outside. That means a lot of things are happening, but they're happening on the inside. And that's why sometimes I disappear. You know, I disappear to work through my libraries, to look at my data, to study people, to process, to read, to understand, to think about my theories, to develop my content and make sure everything is fine. I enjoy this behind the scenes uh, aspect as much as I enjoy engaging with all the viewers and talking and sharing content with other people. I want and I care deeply about my content being correct and that's why it's so important for me to constantly go over and look at and process my ideas. I don't want to just put things out, I'm not one of those people that can consistently throw out a lot of content. I do need time to think about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and to make sure everything is coming from a good place. So. Right now I'm working on the celebrity library and if you didn't know already I have on my website at ericdor.com slash celebrity minus personalities I have a list of celebrities, 600 celebrities to be exact at this point of time, differently typed with all types represented in the Myers-Briggs personality indicator. So what I do is I look at and I study these people, I look at interviews, I look at data, I try to understand them, their quirks, their behavior, their self-assessed personality traits, how they see themselves and how they would score and work through my personality tests. Sometimes I do these imaginary exercises when I step through the character of a person and I have them take the personality test and I imagine what they would answer in different questions and that's how I make sure that the different types will come out correctly on the personality test. I want to make sure a test is written for every personality type so an ESFJ as well as an INTP can take the test and get the type they deserve uh, fair questions that they would answer and agree with based on their personality preference. So these are all parts of how I work through my content. I work through my descriptions, I work through my data, I, I constantly go over and study people because I want to understand them as good as possible you know there is a difference between just being able to type a person and being able to actually understand a person you can type a person sure a lot of people are good at typing people and a lot of people can type a lot of people and have a lot of opinions about people's personality types but how much do you truly know about a person how Many times have you really sat down and had a deep conversation with another person about their feelings, their experiences, their motivations, their joys, their stressors in life, and you know, all those really meaningful, important things. How many times have you read through a book and really gotten inside a person, how they think, how they feel, what they care about, what they want? How much can you truly say about an ESTJ from their own point of view? I see a lot of people hold on to these stereotypical notions about a personality type, which means you can understand and you can say what a personality type is, but you can't say it from that personality type's point of view. You can understand what an ESTJ is from a distance, but you can't understand or speak from an ESTJ's point of view. You can't talk about them in a way they would say is correct. I don't know if you've talked to any sensors lately, if you're an intuitive type, but uh, watch out for telling them what they are from your shallow point of view as an intuitive and make sure that you are actually making an effort to understand them and how they see themselves. And that means if they say, I do have emotions, I do have deep experiences, make sure that you believe them and understand them and find out what those experiences are and how those things work and why that can be. Don't try to delete or ignore contradictions that go against your system and your stereotypes because, you know, the stereotypes are only there for a reason. They're only there to form your first base understanding, the first layer of understanding. And you're going to have to scale through hundreds of these layers to truly understand another person. The stereotypes, they're just defrosting <laughs> and underneath it, there's, there's where you find the cake. Beyond this behind the scenes update, I've also been working through my subtype theories and my subtype theories, I promise I have a lot of good content to come. 
I talk about today observers, deciders, reviewers, navigators. I talk about red, green, blue and yellow subtypes. These all represent different elements and different developments in a personality type, inside a personality type. What I found was, yeah, I might be an INFJ, but I am honestly not a very feeling INFJ. And I understand why some people would place me as a thinking personality type. That because I lead with intuition, my intuition is very strong. And it's strong enough to overtake and overshadow my desire to, uh, my need to uh, engage with feelings and with the people and the tribe and uh, the people around me. A lot of time the focus I have is on the future and what's next and on my theories and my work. And I see this a lot in other INFJs as well and with this subtype. Uh, they get lost inside their own heads and they forget about the people around them. Also, I think subtypes can explain a lot because subtypes also show your element or your type of cognitive functions and how you engage these functions. I see some people have this natural approach where they just naturally embody and radiate their own dominant cognitive function, you know. They just seem, they are the INFJs that really seem like INFJs, that really radiate pure NI energy. And then you have the INFJs that are a little bit more careful and more withheld, you know, they, they are more prone to the use of the inferior function as a break in their system. They are more careful, they are more thoughtful, they think more about how they come across, they work harder to balance themselves out, they try to make sure that they uh, account for their mistakes and problems and personal flaws. And that's why they might appear more withdrawn or their energy might appear more careful. Where people, some people truly go into the flow functions and just naturally embody them. Some go into the stress functions and truly work on and try to improve themselves and better themselves in that direction. So you have the blue types that are a little bit more prone to using their inferior functions and you have those uh, that are more prone to the use of their flow functions and uh, these just reflect a question of whether you move on and you act on your passion and go directly towards what you want or whether you try to take your steps choose your steps carefully and whether you are a more balanced and moderate person so the subtypes are a way to dive into this and truly understand this. I feel I am making big strides into understanding myself and solving some of my personal identity crises. <laughs> you know, I have those. Uh, sometimes I, like I think anyone, will question my own type. I think anybody will go into that hole of, wait a second, why is that? How can I be that? I know this person is an INFJ, so how can I be an INFJ if that person is an INFJ? And uh, so what I do is, when this happens, is I revisit my samples, I look at the different people, I compare and contrast, and I observe my energy, and I study them against other people. And that helps me truly like find peace and understanding. It helps me get to know other people, and it helps me get to know myself. I think my work has started to give me a bit of an identity crisis, because my work will reward me for the things I don't enjoy. <laughs> they will push me towards doing things I don't want. They will uh, put me in a corner based on my skills rather than my needs. And uh, sometimes I forget to set boundaries for myself. And so I get pushed into these corners and I start like feeling like I'm losing myself. So all of this is just a reminder, you know, how do I get back to myself then? Where am I? What, who am I really? And what can I do to protect my flow and my energy? Because, you know, I've been having all these kind of issues lately. It's been really difficult with stress, with tension, with uh, unruliness, sleep issues, you know, all these kind of problems. I've really been feeling bad. I've really been struggling, honestly, uh, because I've been pushing myself so hard to be... Uh, valuable to my workplace while forgetting and neglecting my own personal passion. So here's the good news. 
despite all of this, despite the fact that I haven't really been able to deliver consistent videos for all of you, despite the fact that I know I don't deserve it, uh, I have uh, been blessed by so many nice comments lately. I've received so many nice messages. I've had so many people emailing me. I've had so many people visiting my Patreon page and uh, donating. I've had so many people coming to watch my videos. You know, the channel has been blowing up. It's I feel almost double the size it was just a few months ago and the statistics have been insane and I have no idea what's going on or uh, how this is happening or uh, what's going on. So if anybody can tell me what's happening, uh, let me know. Uh, I've been really dying to find out and while I do, while I find out, trust me, there's a lot of good things to come. and. Um, I feel a lot more centered and a lot more understanding and a lot more clear-headed when it comes to the Myers-Briggs type indicator than I've ever felt before. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.